The Handbag, Istanbul, 2016. It was an ordinary spring day in Istanbul. A long and leaden afternoon like so many others, when she discovered with a hollowness in her stomach that she was capable of killing someone. She had always suspected that even the calmest and sweetest women under stress were prone to outbursts of violence. Since she thought of herself as neither calm nor sweet, she had reckoned that her potential to lose control was considerably greater than theirs. But potential was a tricky word. Everyone once said that Turkey had great potential. And look how that had turned out. So she had comforted herself that her potential for darkness too would amount to nothing in the end. Hey guys, back again and I'm here to do a review of Three Daughters of Eve by Alif Shafak. Okay, now, <sighs> Alif Shafak is slowly becoming a writer that I'm interested in hearing what she's got to say. Okay, so the first Alif Shafak I read was with my book club here. We read The Bastard of Istanbul and it was fantastic. We learned a lot of things about Turkey. Just really, really good. So this is the second novel I will have read from her. And this one as well gives me a lot of insight on Turkey, Turkish culture, politics, religion. It has everything going for it. This book it's called The Three Daughters of Eve because we will, in the story, are going to have the meeting of three women at the University of Oxford. And those three women, it's the main character, Perry, and then the other two girls are Sheeran and Mona. So Mona is a Muslim, young Muslim woman who is covered. And she prefers wearing the headscarf despite all of the bad things that people say to her or how poorly she's treated when she's wearing the headscarf. Sheeran, on the other hand, is I guess what you would call a very modern Arabic girl, but she's not very religious. She and her family, she's been raised this way, which is to be very much like a typical Western European, just doing whatever she wants, sexually free, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have in the middle is Perry, who is a young woman who has grown up in a household where she's almost like the only child because her two older brothers are like literally 20 years older than she is or yeah, 17 years older than she is. So she's grown up as an only child. And as a result, she grows up in a household with a mother and father who no longer have a cohesive relationship anymore. So she has a father who is secular and he's very uh, much believing in, you know, politics and voting and fighting for the rights of the people. And the mother is very religious devoutly religious in every sense of the word, wanting to do all of the practices and everything. So that's pretty much the, 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 the sort of nutshell of what's going on in the story. Now, the thing that's interesting about it is the structure because you have, the book is written into four parts. Each have within them alternating periods of time. So, the central period of time is 2016 and the past is around 2000, 2001. So we alternate between 2001 and 2016. So 2001 is when Perry is studying at the University of Oxford and 2016 is today when she's a married woman you know, and she's living her life in Istanbul. So the thing is, is the, the storyline kind of crunches up as we move along. It, it, everything converges on 2016 
as you get to the end of the book and that's really done brilliantly. Now the book is told, uh, the story is told in third person with plenty of flashbacks and not only that but each part kind of prepares you or should I say guides you along to to the finale of the book. So part one you get her background like why is Perry the person that she is today. So we see her as the child growing up in her household. You, you, We hear a lot about the Turkish politics and the government and house raids, you know, looking for terrorists and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So what Shafak does the best, I think, is she tells you about Turkish history and politics and things. But at the same time, she makes you realize that it's a little bit the same in most countries, that there's always this sort of, you know, dispute between religious and non-religious people or agnostic people. And there's always this idea of how people think of politics and how politics is a part of our lives and how we how we see that um, as as you know as a whole as a people and she she makes all of the themes they're very universal and that's what's really interesting about this book as fundamentally Turkish culture that the book has it is still very universal the themes are universal and that is what is enjoyable. Now, I read this book in about four days. It's not that long. It's about 365 pages, but you read, it reads fairly quickly and it's engrossing. You, as you read along, you're going to be following Perry very closely. So it's in her mind, she's recounting the story and as she recounts, we, we grow to, to like Perry and we grow to understand better uh, Turkish culture, especially when she goes to live in Oxford. Yeah, I mean, that's all I pretty much have to say because you know, you can't really talk too much about this one or you won't want to read it but I would highly recommend you try this one out. She has another one out right now, which is I think very different from this one, but I highly recommend this one. It's just beautifully written. She has the gift of writing. She says so much in her, in the dialogues that she sets up, but she also says so much when she's recounting in the third person. So sometimes, you'll have the feeling that Shafak is right there with you reading when you read third person passages because you can you can you can hear that it's Shafak saying ah you know that's me adding this in there I didn't have a problem with that because she wasn't saying anything that was crazy she everything she was saying was true so I didn't have a problem with that. I didn't feel like she was inserting herself too much into the story but she did a little bit but I kind of liked it because she was saying things that are universal. So yeah, I highly enjoyed this one. This is the last book that I read last month and wow. So my month ended on a bang with four stars with this one because it's not a perfect book. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna lie, but it is a very, very good book and I highly recommend you pick it up especially for the writing. It's gorgeous. She writes these fantastic passages and she has these great, you know, one-liners and just sublime. I like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, I highly recommend Three Daughters of Eve, Alif Shafak. That's all I have for you today. Bye-bye.